what path light takes to travel from one point to another these kind of problems they just fascinate you i don't even remember what happened in mathematics <laughs> Whole semester, I couldn't understand what does Hilbert space mean. We so studied calculus three before E D one and E D two, so it was very easy yes. for us then. Need to it study was not it hard, bro. Okay, so today we have here all these subjects that we have learned so far in three years of our physics journey, and today we are going to rank them how hard these subjects were. So let's start. So the very first subject we have is mechanics or introductory physics. This is the very first subject that you take as a physics major. Do you think that you come into physics and then start studying quantum mechanics and string theory and multiverse? No, you start with Newtonian mechanics and vectors. <laughs> mm. So what would you rank it? Easy. Okay. It was very but, easy. Uh, it, it was very straightforward. I I don't know. Yes, it was easy, but uh, difficulty level varies in Pakistan. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. You just get into university. Uh, for many people, it is intimidating. But it was, if you compare it to these subjects that we have here, it's then, pretty. Then it's easy. Uh, then, then it's yes, pretty easy. easy. Classical mechanics, Lagrangians, Hamiltonians. Uh, Classical mechanics was, was hard. Classical mechanics was not easy. It was more than hard, I would say, because when we go deep into the mathematics of uh, classical mechanics, we come across the concepts uh, conformal transformations and uh, symplectic geometry, Lagrange transformations, and calculus of variation and all that. The ma mathematics is uh, pretty hard, especially for. Uh, not for Newtonian mechanics, but for Hamiltonian and Lagrangian mechanics, uh, mm. things like constraints and uh, types of constraints. We had studied constraints, but when I came across the mathematics, the rigorous mathematics of these concepts, it it was pretty hard. Uh, I would rank it more than hard because the mathematics gets very hard when it comes to the difficult classical problems that are. the problems of complicated systems just to digest the concept of lagrangian and lagrangian mechanics mm. and also solving the brachistochron problem and relating it to fermat's theorem it was very mm. it was very counterintuitive how can we relate something which is so classical to something related to light it was very counterintuitive i did not have any idea that we could relate light to this uh, brachistochron problem also uh, we learned about degrees of freedom the very first time yes, in classical yes, mechanics yes, and it's a very uh, central subject of physics degrees yes, of freedom degrees of freedom and uh, degrees of freedom the concept of degrees of freedom came came from uh, configuration space like how much coordinates do you have in your configuration space of a particular system by the way classical mechanics is very beautiful it's it was very intuitive sometimes it was very intuitive and very beautiful but i enjoyed it a lot like when you like ketanri problem brachistochron problem and then you see uh, what path light takes to travel from one point to another these kind of problems they just fascinate you they are the real physics so what would you rank meta human meta human meta human we are saving you want to <laughs> we are saving human. einstein <laughs> yes yes <laughs> the next one is statistical mechanics the nightmare Yes, the nightmare. We had no idea what is going on in statistical mechanics <laughs> class. The very first lecture we took, um, it was uh, very interesting. Right? It was very fascinating yes, to know about. Yes, statmech uh, is very uh, interesting. But the thing that confuses me is that I still haven't understood the concept of partition functions. What do they mean? I cannot imagine. I can use them. I can use them if you give me a system. and you say solve solve for this system i can use partition mm -hmm. functions all kinds of partition functions but the mm -hmm. problem is i do not understand what they actually mean mm -hmm. the so, same problem i faced with lagrangian when i studied classical mechanics mm -hmm. that i couldn't mm -hmm. understand but lagrangian hamiltonian is easier to understand because hamiltonian is just total energy of your local system but the problem was with lagrangian and the same problem i had was with partition functions what are partition functions but, but the first lecture was very important then uh, first lecture we learned about uh, random walk problem right hmm. Or, yes it was uh, very interesting we started with probability theory you know yes sir. when we started relating thermodynamics with probability theory or the methods of statistical mechanics we lost the whole 
uh, and it became you know statistical mechanics is a sort of a black magic and uh, i'm trying to catch some witch in some far away village and uh, i'm unable to catch it i don't think i have studied statistical mechanics rigorously i don't think hmm. i will rank it hard not meta human classical mechanics no, is no, harder no 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 statistical mechanics is way more harder even harder than classical mechanics for me the concept of partition function is very fundamental because it is the function that tells you how energy will be distributed among the different components or the parts of the system yes exactly it, and also we use a uh, partition function in the canonical formalism of quantum field theory as well but i would say statistical mechanics is harder than meta human or classical mechanics Uh, By the way, Leonard Leonard Susskind said that uh, the masters of physics are, are actually the masters of statistical mechanics. Yes, yes. I would say statistical mechanics is harder than. Uh, so, so you you would put Einstein. Uh, yes. Oh, Because, look. Oh, let's go. Okay, let's, let's go. <laughs> Next one, electrodynamics one. By the way, do you know who this is? Yes, Faraday. Faraday. <laughs> The, and the known and, mathematical pieces and this is the og gauss go watch gauss's gauss. biography right now yes uh, yes Maybe. electrodynamics because one was not that hard because we were very familiar with this stuff gauss's hmm. law faraday's hmm. law ampere's law we were very familiar with this stuff but in electrodynamics hmm. one we were for the very first time studied these laws in the language of calculus 3 or vector calculus right hmm. so it was new for us so i will put medium Uh, yes 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 um, medium right yes. electrodynamics 2 now the game changes electrodynamics 2 mm. was difficult it was very interesting by the way maxwell equation maxwell's so equations are very interesting they are very beautiful i would say hard it was not yeah it was not harder or equal to classical mechanics but it mm. was hard so hard condensed matter physics we have only studied condensed matter physics 1 only the first course of condensed mm. matter physics but i would yes. say it was not that hard and now it's going to trigger ehsan so we are going to listen to him <laughs> <laughs> uh, condensed matter physics was very uh, you know beautiful subject for me we were talking about degrees of freedom yes easy and uh, i was able to Uh, you know understand the quantification of degrees of freedom what do you mean by degrees of freedom mathematically we hmm, studied exactly. uh, degrees of freedom in in f- for the first time in waves and oscillation we couldn't understand what does that mean mathematically but in condensed matter physics we when we solved the systems and when we visualized the systems in k space k and e space then we go to know what does that mean i was, would rank it easy or medium No, it was hard. I think it was hard because <laughs> it uh, was, you you need to study it very hard, deeply. Bro. So hard. The, the, yeah, yes, it was hard. Okay, so remember next one, one thing, huh? Remember one thing: when you are being agonized by the fact that you are not understanding a thing, that is the best time. You are giving so much time to your understanding. Yes, you're right, Doctor Jordan yeah. Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> math methods one. I don't even remember what happened in math methods. <laughs> I just remember partial differential equations. It was complex analysis. Complex right? analysis, yes. Contour uh, integrals. Uh, Contour mm, integrals. Yes. Very yeah. beautiful. Bro, it was very. It was very straightforward, but I would say medium. Mm, medium. 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 It was medium. Math methods yes. two. Math methods two was not easy. <laughs> probability theory plus for the first time uh, we ca- came across a computational new physics computational computational physics yes a new phenomena for us hmm. uh, we use python hmm. uh, it was in math methods 2 for the very first time that we came across numerical solution of differential equations yes we didn't yes. solve numerically before and by the way mathematicians really roast with this for solving equations numerically <laughs> but by the way in particle physics it's very useful solving problems in numerology and yes, yes solving it mm. i would read it hard yes it was hard. hard okay so next one quantum mechanics 1 the very first introduction of quantum mechanics 
स्टन गडलक एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड हाइड्रोजन कोलैप्स ऑफ वेव फंक्शन कॉम्प्लेक्स यस कोलैप्स ऑफ वेव फंक्शन होल सेमेस्टर आई कुडंट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट डज हिलबर्ट स्पेस स्पेस मीन यस आई स्टिल डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दिस लीनियर वेक्टर स्पेस is not a right description to describe a quantum mechanical system mm-hmm. hilbert space is mm-hmm. so, so i don't know uh, like uh, uh, it was hard i think i think it was hard it was it was hard yes mm-hmm. hydrogen yeah. atom was very hard nlm okay so the next one is quantum mechanics 2 perturbation theory perturbation theory was actually very difficult it was difficult <laughs> but it was <laughs> <laughs> bro it was very difficult it was difficult for me to solve problems in quantum mechanics too it was difficult but, but at least but, at least i learned quantum mechanics too i learned a lot from quantum mechanics too and yes. this perturbation theory is very uh, useful for quantum field theory and particle physics but yes. it was difficult for me to understand but it uh, took me a lot they, of time it took me a lot of time to understand perturbation theory i don't think so it was uh, like the hardest co- course in that semester for me it was not hardest uh, I, course it was not the hardest mm. course uh, i would course, say the, the giant I, is coming afterwards yes <laughs> 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 professor lee is looking at us <laughs> uh, yeah, i'm going to yeah. eat you <laughs> <laughs> i would say meta human it was easier than quantum mechanics one it was easier than quantum mechanics one bro no yes no yes. not at all but the things that were missed by mcintyre ma'am aisha our professor told those things okay so the next one is group theory <laughs> group theory was very hard i still don't know group. what group theory is about Uh, I mean, there are two. I am a I am a complete stranger in the field of group theory. What we as physics students study, but uh, she uh, uh, wanted me to give an overall review of the course, what group theory is. And then, when I was talking to her, I realized how abstract this course is. I mean. a group you can put anything in the group literally anything mm-hmm. and it's so abstract the- and it's so uh, you can say it takes you into the world of pure mathematics almost yes yes number 1 number 1 just number 1 it's same it is equivalent to in group theory perspective number 1 is equivalent to identity matrix of any order identity matrix of n by n 1 by 1 2 by 2 3 by 3 n by n and mm. uh, just look at this beauty and then multiplying by a iota multiplying by a iota just anything multiplying anything by a iota you can multiply a, a matrix by a iota and you can multiply a vector that resides in a complex plane you can multiply that vector by a iota this multiplication by iota makes iota member of a group hmm, and uh, you can just literally write iota or you can write the matrix representation of iota you would be you know bamboozled by <laughs> by <laughs> by listening to, to this fact very nuance uh, uh, nuances of uh, group theory are so beautiful that will be bamboozled by this concept you can represent a iota by a matrix yes you can whenever i ask some someone about group theory they are like thoda sa udhar se pad lo thoda sa udhar se pad lo thoda sa udhar se pad lo it's so difficult to uh, study from so many so many books because every book has its own style its own prerequisites right for example if i just start uh, reading from uh, riley hobson it's easy easy to understand from riley hobson because i am familiar with the book but when mm. i jump to sakurai sakurai is like remember in the previous chapter i talked about this and i'm like oh i mm. have to read this whole book now <laughs> i can uh, we can uh, we can make a full video on group theory like how to study group theory 
I am not an expert on gram. I'm talking. I like want I you to. I okay. So in the next video, Ehsan is starting his lecture series on group theory. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No way. <laughs> I still don't understand what is group theory. I still don't understand. It's so much difficult. I'm uh, revisiting again and again whenever you uh, I come across a, a concept that I have studied before. I uh, or it's a new concept. I just look back towards my sources that. Uh, i have uh, you know uh, 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 collected and i will it, rank it einstein. I, einstein 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 yes, the next one <laughs> quantum information <laughs> do you know who this is looks like a prisoner <laughs> yes i know him who is he uh, uh he's uh, von neumann i think yes <laughs> neumann he's von neumann information theory uh, uh, that i think the applications of i would say application of uh, uh, information theory yes, in computing theory and uh, was information theory was like very much in the pure physics side and he brought it mm -hmm. into the real world but mm -hmm. he was not the only person people like uh, shannon was there shannon ellen turing shannon, shannon ellen turing all these ellen people ellen turing uh, yes information theory uh, was being used uh, in um, computing and uh, in uh, hmm. meta human i mean uh, 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 it was uh, for me it was meta human i think because uh, it was it is the course i <laughs> it is the course I, i didn't get a good grade in it and uh, i didn't understand fully yes so. i also didn't fully understand quantum information and i also don't want to oh <laughs> 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 because it is not relevant to my aptitude my interest special relativity the tensor transformation contravariant tensors covariant tensors invariance i will rank it medium it was not difficult for us because we had studied uh, uh, special relativity postulates of special relativity uh, in detail and uh, applications of special relativity uh, to some extent in modern physics hmm. course <coughs> and also uh, and uh, most of the physics students will agree that special relativity is not that hard most of students will hard. agree uh, but when you unless you're talking relativity. unless you're talking about general relativity <laughs> do you agree with our tier list if you do please tell us in the comments and roast us in the comments see you in the comments <laughs> <laughs>